welcome to my studio and my little world. I'm so glad you could come and visit. Come on in. I'll show you some of my work. This guy is a little puppy who's lost. And he's, he's a little bit sad, but he's cute. My name is Gay Tracy, and I'm a resident artist at the Brush Gallery and Studios here in Lowell. This is my studio, and I'm really lucky to have a studio here. I had to be juried in, and um, luckily I passed the test. There are 13 artists here now, and um, we each have a studio, but we're different kinds of artists. There are a number of painters. I'm a painter, but there are also people who do weaving and ceramics and jewelry and the interaction of having that kind of different art around you is is a very stimulating and helpful. I've probably done art all my life. Every artist will say that. Um, and I have not been formally trained. Um, I've, I have a master's in business administration, which was a waste of time for me. I should have gone to art school instead, but we all make mistakes. And um, I have taken a lot of classes at um, the Museum of Fine Arts, um, a great many at the De Cordova, because I grew up in Lincoln, and I went to the first De Cordova day camp, and I took a lot of classes there growing up, and I took classes in college. I think every child does art, and I think children's art is phenomenal because children are very free and those of us that choose art struggle to get that freedom back again. So as a child I my favorite thing to do was to get this great book of white paper and a whole bunch of crayons from my great aunt and I think she gave it to me every time we came to visit so I would have something to do when all the adults were talking and I would make a whole family story out of the book. I would draw the house, I would draw the kids, I would draw the parents, I would draw some animals, um, and they were very childlike. And I still have one of the books, and the first house that I bought with my husband, I drew when I was about five years old or six years old. And it was amazing when I saw it and thought, oh my goodness, that's the same house. When I started to take art seriously was in college. And that's when I started to paint. Um, before that I would do children type painting, but uh, that's when I started to use oil paints and acrylic paints and um, more sophisticated materials and have some real uh, critique of the work and um, be in a class where certain hours were expected. And that's where I feel like my beginning of an artist started. I've been at the brush for 13 years and when I came here I hadn't painted for a while because I'd had a family and it was hard to paint at home with kids running around. Um, so um, it was like beginning again although it's like a bicycle, you don't lose it. And I thought I was going to paint people and then I just started painting animals and I wanted, I like to paint emotion and motion and I find that painting emotion, especially in dogs, is easier than in people. Dogs are very clear in what they're feeling when they look at you and my dogs are very colorful because I love color. So my dogs aren't the color of dogs. They're pink and green and purple and brown and blue and they have polka dots. And, but they do have uh, certain expressions in their eyes and their eyes are the favorite part for me to do um, that expresses a feeling. And uh, when you look at them, um, you can relate to that feeling. This dog is called Electrified. Uh, I think that comes from the dog's eyes. It's a chihuahua or a chihuahua type dog. 
and it has that feeling to me of, I just don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but here I am, and I'm ready to go. Somebody named him Guilty Gus, and to me, that was perfect. He looks so guilty. I don't know what he has done, but he doesn't want the viewer to know what he has done. He's done something he shouldn't. This is Banjo, and Banjo became my muse for a while. He's a lab that belongs to some friends of mine, and he sits in this strange position, and they, they kept saying, you can't believe how our dog sits. You, you just have to paint it. So they brought me a picture, and I painted Banjo, but I kept painting Banjo over and over again because he was so fun. I've also done a lot of landscapes, and they're fun. And again, my palette for the landscapes is color, 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 because that's what I like. And if you want reality, I guess you won't want my art. But um, I try to get feeling in it that is different from reality, but it has feeling. And sometimes landscapes do have odd colors in them. As you can see, they're in my colors. There's a lot of color involved. And there's some motion in this one and in this one. And to me... Um, they just, I think they're very pretty. Pretty is a really bad word for art, but um, I think they express something positive. I've been in Lowell since 1999, and I've been here since 1999. I also have the studio over at Western Avenue, uh, which is another uh, place where many artists have studios. My studio is open all the time to the public, so anyone who comes in and wants to talk to me about what I'm doing, do I like art, how do I do it, what should they do. We get a lot of students from UMass who are writing papers, and they might write a paper about a certain piece of mine, and I'll talk to them about the piece. This painting is called A Murder of Crows, and I painted it because I found out that um, a flock of crows is known as a murder. And I thought that was such a wonderful term that I wanted to paint it. And I guess that's why crows represent death to some people. I don't feel that these are particularly deadly crows. They seem to be going in many directions. I think that all contributes to the artistic community in Lowell. I think Lowell has made a gigantic leap in the time since I first came here in having more opportunities for artists and more artists. And I'm very lucky to be where I am at this time. My message to other people who are thinking of being artists who are artists is just do your thing and try not to pay too much attention to the market and try not, which is terrible, and try not to pay too much attention to what other artists think. Um, it's very good to get critiques from other people and it's good to take classes, but art comes from the inside. And if you pay too much attention and get too involved in rules, I feel that, for me at least, that makes um, art suffer but I don't like cerebral art I like art that's from the gut and that's a personal opinion some people like cerebral art a lot so um, there's room for everything and uh, every painting has a home hopefully someday and um, just do whatever you makes you happy this one was lots of fun to do um, it's people dancing, as you can see. Behind the people, there was another painting of a person. You can sort of see the eyes and the mouth of those, that person. And then all around are little sort of stick figures that are dancing. And that, for me, um, creates the energy and the music that I can hear as I see these people dance. Making a living as an artist is difficult. And Lowell has really been helpful in providing spaces for studios and having 
open studios that are well publicized, that bring in a lot of people. I think our open studios in Lowell is almost as popular as the Folk Festival. Not quite. But, um, and it brings a lot of people in who learn about art, learn about Lowell. And I think it does great things for the artists. I think it does great things for the city. People are always surprised and say, oh, it's such a wonderful city. We didn't know Lowell was so great. And we get a lot of foreign visitors in here. The fact that we're in the National Park is a huge opportunity for the 13 artists that are here because we get a lot of visitors that are coming to the park and from many other countries. And that's exciting. The city's also been very good about trying to teach us how to market our work. For some people, that comes very naturally. Um, I like to take those classes because for me, it doesn't come naturally. I would like to see some more workshop with professional gallery owners. Um, owners from maybe Boston or Western Massachusetts or other states that could help us find out what they're looking for, how, what did they want in an artist, and what there is somehow a wall between being a local artist, which I am, and I'm pretty well known in the uh, Lowell area, but I'm not very well known outside of Lowell. Um, I'd like to maybe attach myself to a gallery in another city, and I don't quite know how to do that. So workshops on that would help me a lot. When I paint cats, this is how they come out. They come out wild and angry and full of vigor. And that's because I find, I love cats, but paintings of cats can be kind of tacky. Um, and um, my cats are definitely not that kind of cats. Um, I love doing the color. I've done a lot of cats coming out of fields where you just see their head um, coming out of the field. This one is surrounded by other cats um, that are from hell. It's called Hell's Cats. I do sell my work and I, my art is a quote business, but I'm at the level where people buy my work because they love it. And I really like that. The people that come in and they see a piece and it speaks to them, they also often like to have a relationship with the artist and to know who the artist is and what's behind a piece. And I have the time to do that, um, especially here at the Brush where it's open to the public a lot. My art has touched many people. I've had people buy one of my dogs that come out of my head and then say, well, can you do a painting of my dog? And I usually say yes, although that's much harder. And I do a commission for them. I always think of, why don't people buy art more often? And they spend a lot on dinner in really expensive restaurants, some people, and they spend a lot on entertainment. And art is something that's with you forever or for a long time and it gives you pleasure for a long time. It's, it's worth the money that you put into it. And I love to give um, when I have a new niece or nephew born, I always paint them a picture of a cow because the first one, for some reason, I painted a cow and now they all have a cow. And those paintings that you grow up with, I think everybody can remember something in their room from when they were little. And that's usually a painting or a piece of art. So it makes a wonderful gift for um, somebody starting off in life and for a child if it's appropriate for a child. My name is Frank Tedley. I'm a photographer. I live here at Appleton Mills. And um, I'm a fine art photographer. Uh, so I work on projects. I don't work on commercial stuff. I don't do weddings and things like that, which isn't to say anything bad about that. It's just not my style. Uh, I also do installations for museums and people. I do a lot of work for the Griffin Museum of Photography in Winchester and Magenta Foundation from Toronto. Um, 
Basically, uh, I went to NISOP, New England School of Photography in Kenmore. Um, I was in the high-tech business for many years, 26, doing speech recognition. Uh, but that sort of went in its own way and path, and uh, I've turned to uh, photography to uh, fulfill my uh, needs to express. I was uh, in Vietnam, I was a medic in Vietnam, and I was able to get some camera equipment quite easily and cheaply. And so I started taking some pictures, and when I first came back I did some more, and then I sort of put it aside as I got on with the other stuff and finished college and started working. And uh, at, when I was working at Kurzweil, Kurzweil Applied Intelligence, one of the speech recognition companies, there was a whole group of people there who were interested in art and things outside the work. And so we met, we talked, and eventually a bunch of us went to NISOP and uh, took up photography. Photography is very interesting that way in that there's a large body of, of work out there to be seen and influenced by. Uh, I'm very uh, fond of Paul Strand. Um, I, I just believe his work is, especially with the black and white that you can see here, uh, he has such a tonal range, but he also has such a feeling for his subjects. Uh, Robert Frank was another one. I've done a lot of work with the elderly and people uh, and catching the moment. And, you know, Carter Brasson, you know, his whole theory was about catching the moment. So, lots of influences. Well, photography is, is interesting. You know, it, it, there was a long time when it was uh, not considered art. A lot of people looked upon it as a more mechanical, technical thing rather than artistic. Uh, now, that's less and less, um, but it's kind of come back in a way with the digital business. So the reason I like to be a, a fine art photographer is expression, really. It, it's, it's getting the story out. Whatever uh, the project that I'm currently working on, I want to be able to go in depth and, and pursue that. Uh, it's not the same thing as a commercial venture. I want to pursue a, a body of work, variety in that body of work, but it's got to cover the range. It's, it's got to have a feeling for the event or the people in it or the topic or whatever the, the uh, project is about. Well, your style changes, and particularly true in photography, your style changes a little bit based on the equipment that you have which was getting back to the point before about whether it was an art or not and people thinking because you could, anyone could pick up a camera, it wasn't uh, quite the same as painting, which does have a certain physical uh, skill that you have to have that is not necessarily true in photography. The thing is, you need the same eye in photography if you're going to take good pictures. So basically what's happened over the years is the development of the technology, uh, different kinds of cameras, uh, better quality uh, imaging sensors, uh, the lenses are getting nicer. Um, but I, I still go back every once in a while and use the old uh, field camera. This is a five by, four by five black and white, or you could use color too, black and white field camera that produces very large negatives which have great grain uh, and are excellent for enlarging. Here in the building, I'm actually president of the Artist Association for Appleton Mills. So I look after the gallery, I try to get all the artists organized, which is sometimes interesting. Uh, also do the Lowell Open Studios. Uh, I'm also a producer at, at LTC. So we have a show, the building has a show that we have at LTC. So the, we've done one that's on the air, it's under the titled Bohemian Rhapsody for now, but eventually it'll change more to the Apple to Mills artists. The studio location, well, this is it. This is the work and live and workspace it was is that. So it's nice, the light comes from the right direction for daytime shooting. Um, over there, there's a, I have backdrops and I have uh, in storage downstairs, I have all my lighting and stuff. So I can, and uh, computers over there and you can see some of the printers around. So I have enough stuff here to be <coughs> more than um, busy enough. What I don't have is access to a dark room. I still have all my equipment in storage downstairs. So I'd love to put together into a dark room, but I don't know that that'll happen anytime soon. So I make do with the film. What I do is I scan it into the computer and then print it uh, the same way as you would print digital. In a studio, 
I have backdrops. I have different uh, backdrop material. So that if I'm taking a portrait or something like that, we can change that. I can also put wires up like this and hang stuff on it for open studios. And this is one of my favorite printers. This is an Epson 7800. Um, it is a, does a good job of printing large scale prints like that. Different projects along the floor. There's a lot of wall space here in the unit, but uh, even so, when you talk about project works and you have 10 or 20 images for a project, the, the space really isn't quite large enough for all that. So we put different ones up. Some of these pictures you can see here, these were from my sister's uh, community garden in New Haven, Egerton Park. She's been a member there for 20, 30 years. I don't even know anymore. And so we went down one year every season, four times a year, we went down to visit and took pictures of the park itself and the uh, people working there. That's my sister over there. Um, and so basically these kinds of projects, long-term projects like this, connect with the people who are a part of the park, the, all the gardeners there. So we had a show there at their place. We also had a, my sister happens to be a botanical illustrator. And so we also had a show in, in the Griffin Museum in Winchester, a juxtaposition of the, um, the photography and the, the graphic uh, drawings she would do of plants and things like that. In the old days, with the canals, there were tunnels under some of the buildings and the water would flow through from one canal to the other, turning turbines inside the building, which was used to generate power. And this giant wheel was in the basement, and you can see the turbine on the right, and the water would flow through it and spin it and then cause the wheel to turn and basically cause uh, power to be generated for the building. So the building was almost self-sufficient. So this is a color version, a little bit more stylized. This is an old-fashioned technique called tintype. Mm -hmm. So it has a, a more antique look to it, or older technique, alternate styles. Well, the thing about promotion and selling is that that can be a full-time job in and of itself. Uh, it helps if one had a gallery. I sort of have a relationship with a gallery in Hudson, New York. Part of Lowell Open Studios is to get people to come in and see the work. The gallery downstairs is available so people can come see the work. Um, the sales are um, they're not as plentiful as one would like. I do work for people if they have a particular task or something that they want photographed. So that's another way. But it's the marketing. and It's, it's, it's a full-time job. You've got to make contact. You have to have, I have a website. Um, you have to be shown around. You have to go to these juried shows. I've only lived in Lowell a short time. I, I've been here a year. Uh, the building, Appleton Mills, is new. It only opened April last year, so it's a little over a year and a half old. So I'm still learning the connections in town. Um, be nice to have a gallery show in here at some place like Zeitgeist or something like that. I've been talking with them, and they're interested, but we have to put a show together. You make connections. You meet people. People come to see your work. Uh, so... Uh, how the town could help, come on Lowell Open Studios and buy something. <laughs> the Lowell Open Studio is a citywide event where artists open their studios. And in this case, I'll open this unit here that I live in because it's a live and work studio. And there's about seven or eight other studios in the building that will be open here at Appleton Mills. In the gallery downstairs, uh, Artist League of Lowell, or is it known as All, They'll having 12 or so artists in the, in the gallery itself. And then around town, there's so many different places where you can go. There's a brochures. You can find it online. If you Google Lowell Open Studios, you'll see a long list of both artists and galleries. The name of our gallery is Millworks, and it's online uh, for the Lowell Open Studios. We don't have a website for it, but you can find it there. This, this panorama up here is from Yosemite. I uh, went there on a field trip in 2010, that summer. It was a great time. Uh, and that was taken with successive pictures. And there's a program that you use to stitch it together with and make one giant uh, panoramic and print it on the printers. 
you have to work. You have to work a lot. Uh, basically, for a photographer, you have to take a picture every day. You have to really delve into it and not just take a picture. You have to understand it. You have to look at the framing. You have to look at the project you're working on. You have to see what you've captured. And so you want to get to a point where you're not just whipping your camera out and shooting off 100 shots. You're studying what you're looking at. You're, you've got to have a feeling for your subject. You've got to think about your subject. You've got to frame it. You've got to make it so that it has both the subject's message and your message because it, it's an self-expression of yourself as well. And part of that comes from how you're doing your art, what you're looking at, and the kind of subjects you choose. But then once you've chosen a subject, you, you've got to get the story out from the subject itself. So um, like Avedon's American West book, that's a really good book for looking at how he chose his subjects, how he went about traveling all across the country and finding the patterns and looking for these things and delving into it. The other famous one is Robert Frank's Americans. He did a very similar thing quite some time before. I think he did that in the 50s, I think. And he traveled all over the country and did some, some great work and, and sort of delving into the local communities everywhere, to the personalities of the people he was shooting. So you have to dig down deep and find the story and capture it. <laughs> This particular picture, which was actually taken in Mount Auburn Cemetery, is an infrared. Infrared is a different light range. It's above visible light. And it has a, a different texture and feel. This was taken in the summer. So all this area that appears white was actually green on the tree, a live uh, photosynthesis material. And the heat and the energy that comes out of that turns into white on the film. But the, you notice the black on the street is still the same. So I just love the tone of this, the sort of etherealness of it, but also the image itself. It's this, this road that seems to be going, uh, disappears into the background. Well, for my future plans, um, it's, it's just continue finding a theme that resonates with me, trying to find the story that works. Um, I, I like to do travel stuff. So this past summer I was in Philadelphia, which is, I'm from Philadelphia originally. And uh, so we're looking at neighborhoods down there. We took a lot of, went to the old family manse, you know, looking at the houses that my great grandparents lived in, stuff like that. So that was kind of interesting and capturing the neighborhood now and stuff like that. Um, so maybe putting that into some sort of project. Uh, as I was saying before, with the black and white, the pizza ovens, the tone, that's really about the tone, but it's also about what people see and don't see. In other words, you come into these places all the time to get something, but you don't really look at it, you know? And so I just want to capture the tone of those ovens, the beautiful color of them in black and white, and, um, and then just sort of see how that works together.